Hello Year 3 and welcome to your third special topic video just for you. This uh, this video we are looking once again at light and dark and continuing our science theme. Um, there's going to be some experiments to do, some interesting things to do, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. What you will need is a torch and a few other objects, but we'll go through those as we go through the video. All right, so definitions. To that, this uh, lesson we're looking at three specific words, three definitions, and it's really important that we learn the meaning of these words. The first word is opaque. Opaque. Materials like card block the light well and they don't let any light through and they are what we call opaque. Translucent. Translucent. Materials that let some light through but scatter the light so you can't really see through it properly are called translucent. They have a very special property and they are very useful for very specific things. That word is translucent. And finally, the final word is transparent. So anything material that's transparent means it lets light right the way through it and you can see through it. So um, the word is transparent. So stop the video, look at these items below and work out which word you would use to describe the items. So are they opaque, translucent or transparent? Stop the video now and talk to an adult and explain why you think that they would be made out of that material. And then when you come back, we'll go through the answers. Welcome back. So a bathroom window. Now windows need to actually let some light in. That's the whole idea of them, to let light from outside into buildings. But a bathroom window? Most people in their bathrooms tend to be sat on the toilet or having a shower or a bath. You don't want to let all to be able to be seen. You don't want to let all of the light through. So the chances are that you are going to want a bathroom uh, window, which lets some light through, but disperses it a bit. So I think they're going to be translucent. Living room curtains. Now, in most rooms, you have the curtains so that when you draw them together, they stop light coming in. So there's no point having translucent or transparent curtains. You might as well not bother. So therefore, I think you'll, be, you'll agree that curtains generally need to be opaque and not let any light through. Car windscreens. Now, if you had an opaque scar, uh, car windscreen, you wouldn't be able to see through it. If you had a translucent uh, car windscreen, you wouldn't be able to see very much. It would make everything a bit distracted. And certainly when I'm driving, I like to be able to see where I'm going. And I like to be able to see the road ahead and to see other cars so I don't crash into them. So car windscreens really do need to be transparent. Now a sun hat. In the previous lesson, we looked at sun hats and said the whole idea is that they stop the UV rays reaching your skin. So if they were translucent or transparent, they would let the sun rays in and that would be no good at all. So they need to be opaque. Windows with a lovely view. Now I've got a lovely view out of the window opposite me now. So if that window was um, opaque or translucent, I wouldn't be able to see through it. So I wouldn't be able to see the lovely view of my garden. So obviously windows need to be transparent. Shower curtains, oh interesting. Once again, you have a shower curtain over your bath, but often the light in your bathroom is the other side of the shower curtain from where you're having your shower. Now that needs to let some light in, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see yourself what you were doing in the shower when you're washing yourself. So those need to be translucent. Remember, if they were transparent, anyone could see you if they looked through the, uh, the curtain at you. So we do really need those to let some light in, but not really um, a lot of light. So enough for you to be able to shower. So that's the answer to those. So we know that light is, is a beam of energy that travels from a light source. And we said that a light source could be the sun or a torch or something like that. But light can only travel in straight lines. Waves of light are called light rays and they are straight lines. If you shine a torch that a beam of light can travel, you will see that it will travel in a straight line. If you do this in a darkened room, um, you'll actually see the beam 
of light, um, which is really good because it really shows it travels in a straight line. Maybe you want to do this uh, in the evening or if you can get a room dark by drawing the curtains and then see what happens if you put an opaque thing in front of the light beam. So I've got a opaque pair of trousers here. If I was to shine the light to see what would happen now, obviously you need your trousers to be opaque because if they were translucent or transparent, everyone would be able to see your pants and that would be no good, that would be pointless. So what happens if you use a translucent material? Now, funnily enough, I've got a shower curtain here. And as you can see, you can see through it, but you can't see through it very well. So what would happen if you shined your torch through the shower curtain? What would happen to the beam of light? Now, this bottle of Vimto is transparent. You can see all the way through it. And that is really useful because you can actually see how much Vimto you've got left. And when you're pouring it, how much you're pouring. But what would happen if you shone a light through a transparent bottle? What would happen to that beam of light? Try it and see and see if you can work out what's happening. So you may have heard that Mason in Pankhurst class has got a new baby daughter. So here's an exercise for you to do. Now, she keeps crying early in the morning because there's too much light getting into her bedroom and waking her up. What I want you to do is think about the kind of materials you could best choose to make some new curtains for her bedroom. What kind of material would you use? Would you use opaque, translucent or transparent? Maybe you could actually draw a picture of the curtains, put your design and write underneath it whether they would be opaque, translucent or transparent. Um, and if you do, put it up on tapestry so we can see or e get your parents to email it to the year three teacher's email address and so we can see your work. Look forward to receiving them. Now, moving on to look at shadows. We said opaque objects do not light, let any light through. They completely block the light and stop it traveling any further. Now these objects create shadows. Obviously when you're outside on a bright sunny day, you can see your shadow and that's because the light source is the sun and it shines on you really hard. And if you look down, you're blocking the light from the pavement, from the playground, and you can see your shadow. So shadows are areas of darkness where the light has actually been blocked. So turn off the video and with an adult, go through these statements and decide between yourselves whether the shadow, uh, whether these statements are actually true or false. So stop the video now, work through the statements and then decide whether they are true or false. I'll read them out to you. Shadows are reflections from the sun. The stronger the source of light, the bigger the shadow. Shadows are made by something blocking the light. An object can make more than one shadow. So pause the video and talk to someone about which of those statements, which of those sentences are true and which of those sentences are false and why that might be. So moving on. Shadows are reflections from the sun. Well, actually that's false because we know that shadows aren't reflections. They're where the sun has been blocked, where light has been blocked. So they're not actually reflections. Reflections are when things bounce off. So that's false. The stronger the source of light, the bigger the shadow. Well, I think that's false as well, because it doesn't matter how bright the light source is, what's important is maybe something else. Maybe having a really bright source will make the shadow much darker because more light is hitting the ground where it can get through, but it's certainly not gonna make it any bigger. Shadows are made by something blocking the light. Well, that's true, that's what we've said. So that one's true. An object can make more than one shadow. Well, actually that's true as well, because if you look at this picture below of footballers, they are playing in a stadium in the evening and there are four very, very strong um, lights on them so that people can see the footballers so really really strong lights and as you can see that has created four different shadows for each player so yes you can have more than one shadow if you've got more than one light source so do shadows change size and direction as if so how do they do that what i want you to do is i want you to do an investigation to see how shadows change when the distance 
between an object and the light source changes. So in order to do that, you will need a light source, like a torch, and an object. I've got a little um, statue of an elephant here. So you can then, um, in a darkened room, see if you can create a shadow of your object on the ground and then move your light source further away from the object and see what happens to the size of the shadow. So here's a picture of it down below. So I want you to try that. We'll obviously have to wait till you can get a darkened room. Now, what happens if you change the angle of the lights to the object? So here's your object. So changing the angle would be maybe to have it shining from here or here or here or here. How is that going to change the shadow? I want you to try that and see if you can change the angle and see what happens to the shadow. And see if you can work out what has happened and why. See if you can explain what has happened and why. Maybe you could draw a diagram with arrows to show what you did. Maybe take some photos of what you did and to show what happened and see if you can explain it um, using the diagram. Maybe you could get someone to put your diagram up on tapestry so we can see what you've done. And maybe some photos of you doing the experiment. I hope you're having a lovely week and I look forward to having another lesson with you next week. So goodbye.